Well, for more on the state of Saudi investment, I'm joined now by Hafed al -Guel. He's a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Institute at the School of Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins University. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Rachel, very much. So as we saw a year ago, many countries and organizations boycotted this Saudi investment forum following the death of Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi. Um, what are the expectations for this year's forum in terms of attendance and sentiment? I think you'll see a little bit more attendance this year, as you just already reported. I, do, I think it will be a much more subdued uh, conference than usually the Saudis would like to do. Uh, last year was a complete failure, um, and Saudi Arabia has created this forum specifically as its sort of flagship to attract investment um, for its diversification uh, drive. Western companies, specifically United States, European companies, are going to have a hard time attending because of the public backlash, which is still very much alive about Jamal Khashoggi. But others from Russia and China, other parts of the world, I think, might see uh, this is an opening for them to crowd out Western companies. So then, is it really a case of sort of forgive and forget uh, in Saudi Arabia, considering a lot of you know countries are looking at slowing global growth and also really want to boost their bottom lines for these companies? Absolutely. I mean, Saudi Arabia remains a very big market or a big uh, powerhouse in the global market. I mean, it's uh, the largest uh, producer of oil. It has a huge uh, sovereign wealth fund has very ambitions, uh, ambitious plans to diversify its economy. It's uh, Saudi Aramco, its uh, big company, is going to be the largest IPO ever, uh, over $2 trillion or so. Uh, these are all massive, uh, if you will, uh, attractions for people. The problem is that uh, you still also have some political instability in the Gulf. We saw the bombing, for example, in Saudi Arabia's uh, oil heartland only a few, uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, which took uh, off about 50% of their capacity. It's coming back uh, soon, but still that also shows a very serious vulnerability. And, and speaking of that, that bombing, um, do you see that affecting the forum at all? It is because any smart business uh, uh, will always be nervous about any place that is um, might end up caught in a war, especially when you have this tension between the United States and Iran, which is increasing. There is also the Yemeni war. Uh, Houthis have been um, able to hit inside Saudi Arabia. We saw that even in, in, in the case of the oil, fee, uh, oil capacity. So there is a lot of nervousness. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, worry about the Saudi-Emirati alliance, um, which in Yemen and you know it's seen also elsewhere. I mean, especially the Emirates. The Emirates is being seen slowly as uh, a troublemaker in the region, interfering in places as far away as uh, Libya and Tunisia, uh, Sudan, uh, Yemen, Syria. A lot of people are nervous about that kind of instability that's being instigated. And they see that Saudi Arabia sort of supports the Emirates to some extent, even though there are now signs of, of some kind of friction over Yemen. So then, so then against this, obviously, this very complicated geopolitical backdrop, what is it that Saudi Arabia is then looking for from its trade partners? It needs to diversify. It's no, no, no longer a question of whether they want it or not. Um, Depending on one commodity, especially a carbon-based uh, commodity like oil, petroleum, is no longer a smart move in this world. Um, for example, the United States is no longer an importer of, of oil. It has reached sufficiency. Uh, you have the global climate problems. Uh, there's a huge backlash against any um, pollutant. Uh, in this environment. That is going to only increase. You're seeing all kinds of new technologies emerging that use solar or use electricity and so on. So Saudi Arabia needs to come up with new ways uh, for its economy um, to, to sustain itself. Now, the oil is not going to get them that far. 
Now, I do want to get to the U.S.-Saudi relationship because we know that um, regarding the investigation of Jamal Khashoggi, they, were, they said that they, had or, they found that um, U.S. reports had concluded that MBS, the Crown Prince, may have ordered um, the murder. So what has that done, if anything, to then the U.S.-Saudi relationship? A lot of damage. Um, I don't think I've ever seen Saudi Arabia stock uh, go down in Washington circles as I have seen it over the last year. Um, there is a lot of uh, uh, new enemies that emerge for Saudi Arabia in, in, in Washington circles. There is a lot of anger in Congress among the senators, including people who are very close to Trump, like Senator Graham. Um, there is a, a sense that Saudi Arabia has not lived up to its responsibility uh, when it comes to this uh, sad case of Jamal. I think you will see more and more push for more accountability on this front. And I think Saudi Arabia needs to somehow get ahead of that uh, case. You, you cannot ignore it. It's not something small that can be ignored. You need to face up to it. And so far, Saudi Arabia has not done that. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much Thank for your you. insights, as always. Hafed al there, Senior Fellow at the Foreign Policy Institute at the School of Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins University.